Hi, everybody. Let's get everybody loading in. Let me get my little chat. Hello, Kelly. How are you? A friendly reminder to make your chat say all panelists and attendees or else only our team will see and we want everyone to see because it is fabulous to all be able to come together in this strange time. Hello, Bianca. Hello, Thalma. Make sure you change your drop down to all panelists and attendees, Thalma, please. Uh, Bradley is here. Trina is here. Emily, hello. We have a couple of Emilys. Always, we always keep spare Emilys because you never know. Uh, hello, Linda. Good to see you. Oh, my goodness gracious. Thank you all for saying hello. Hi, Anna. Hello, Kat. Woohoo. Hello, Kathy. Oh, my goodness gracious. It's so good to see you, beautiful people. Hello, hello. Hi, Pete. So glad you could join us. Oh, gosh, y'all. Woo. What a time. How's everybody doing? Let's take a moment and get present. <sighs> take a breath. Just drop in. Get here. Be present. That for me, honestly, is one of my favorite things going on right now is I am more than ever before doing a really good job of checking in and making sure that I'm fully here. And I mean that in like every meeting that I'm having to, this is the sixth Zoom of the day for me right now. Um, and it's only one o'clock here in LA. So it's been, um, it's been a, an early start to a long day. And I still have one meeting after this, uh, but I have a couple hours between this one and that one. So um, I will probably take a little nap. Um, and usually Monday's my day off. Monday is the day that I wall off from all things. But right now it's different times and different times require different paces for the schedule, different, um, different rules for you know what used to be for me that, that I have to set these boundaries or else I will work myself into the ground. I um, have to give a little more space to my community, to my clients, to my friends, to, to my business, to, I just, because it's required right now. And I, that's something that I wanted to make sure that I say to everyone here, um, there is a lot of conversation going on right now between your amygdala and your executive function, the part of your brain that is fully developed, that has the ability to use logic and reason and um, is good at adulting. Uh, this part of the brain is really sharing space with the amygdala which is primal brain, monkey mind. It is the stuff that says, you're not safe, you're about to die, the sky is falling, because the amygdala's job is to stand at attention and make sure that things are not trying to kill us all day, every day. The amygdala's job is to perceive everything as a threat because its work is to prevent us from letting things that are threats get to us. So it's that spidey sense when there's something that's not, not right. Uh, if you've ever gone somewhere and as you're walking out into the parking lot, you just feel yourself going, mm, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait until other people are also walking and walk with because there just feels like something's not right. That's your amygdala. The problem is right now, especially if you haven't disciplined yourself about how much news or how much um, media, period, social media, news media, any kind of conversation that's going on in the world about the state of the world right now, if you've not been really disciplined about putting that stuff in check, um, you're being fed with amygdala hyping information constantly. And the amygdala does not need a lot of help to get keyed up. The amygdala stands on ready. It's why, why when you get an, an email, that pisses you off, or if like me, you have certain people that when they send an email, just seeing their name in the inbox makes you go and you feel your blood run differently. Am I the only one who has this happen? That there are just certain people that just seeing them on your caller ID or seeing them come into your inbox, you just feel this like, whew, and, and, and you feel like for me, I feel it go up the back of my neck. I feel my ears turn pink. 
I, like if I, if I were to actually go look in the mirror, I would see it happen. And I just feel this flood of chemicals. That's your amygdala saying you are not safe. When the amygdala is in charge, we narrow our focus about the field of possibilities for the ways out of the situation. And so the reason I am taking a few minutes to talk about this is because when we can relax the amygdala using executive function, using logical brain, using reason, because reason says, this isn't my life for the rest of my life. This is an extended period of time where I temporarily have to behave differently while a lot of people are really scared, myself included sometimes, but this isn't the sky is falling, the economy is falling, nations as we know them are falling. This, this isn't the planet is dying. All of those catastrophized thoughts are what happens when the amygdala stays in charge for too long. Executive function goes, we'll never go back to normal as we knew it a month ago. That's done. But it will be just like when catastrophic things have happened in the past, everything from the Great Depression to the wars that we've been through to 9-11 to the economy crashing to every major disease that swept through that has made a change in how things are done, we eventually get back to enough of this is what life is like that we can stand down from that nervousness. So the executive functions job right now is to say, it's cool, I, I, amygdala look, I know, I know, even I am tempted to run a list of things that could prove that you're right and that we are about to die, you, you bet. However, I also know odds are we just got a nice extended little run of some different behaviors and different choices and restrictions that don't feel good. They feel a little sticky, not fun. And we may even have people that we're very close to whose health is compromised or that we're very concerned for. And those are very real issues that happen irrespective of pandemics. We have people that in our lives are in compromised situations that we're very close to and that we worry about. So that's not new that's not exclusive to this. It's part of life and loving people. And so the executive function has the ability to calm down the amygdala about those types of things. And so what I would love to ask you to do for just a couple of minutes here at the top of the call is if you're in a place where you can sit focused, grounded, the, the saying is put your feet on the floor so that you can actually feel something solid beneath you. I, of course, sit like a crazy person and keep my feet like up here, one under me and one um, bracing me like a kickstand. So do however you feel. If you want to sit crisscross applesauce, that's fine too. But I'm going to close my eyes and put one hand on my heart and the other hand on my gut because those are two really powerful centers for me. And if you will with me, please just take a breath don't make it so deep that you hyperventilate yourself. Just take a breath. And on the exhale, try to go twice as long as that inhale. If you can send it out through your mouth, even better. So inhale. Take just a tiny pause at the top. And a nice long exhale twice as long as that inhale. And by the time we do it this third time, what you should start to feel is your hips feel a little heavier. The chemicals that are dumping down from your brain and heading into your nervous system maybe creating a little bit of a tingle. And as you continue the breathing with the exhale twice as long as the inhale, you may feel parts of your body kind of feeling like they're coming online. Like you may be feeling parts of your body for the first time today. Like, oh, hi, well, hello outer thigh. 
Ooh, hello, Arch of the Foot. Oh, cool. Shoulder. You just relaxed a little. Neat. Do another deep breath. And as you give yourself this gift of just simple grounding and connecting with your breath, what you're doing is telling your amygdala, the most primal part of your brain, we're cool, we're cool. Continue to do this as long as you need. I'm gonna go ahead and blink open my eyes and wiggle my fingers and wiggle my toes and wiggle my nose a little bit so that I can come back from that. Because that already calmed me down a great deal. And whenever I finish that, I always like to hug myself, especially right now as we're not getting as much physical contact as we're used to. I mean, everybody's going now, love languages are getting really clear. If anybody's like, I didn't know that I was a physical touch love language person until I couldn't get the physical touches that I'm used to. Wow, now it's clear. Give yourself a hug, be present for yourself, really connect, keep, keep the breathing going as long as you need to. It's good, it's good. The idea behind this is as many times a day as you can tap into this part of your self-care, you are giving your nervous system just a tiny little break from having to stand at attention so freaking much all the time. And we're not designed to be keyed up and certain that it, there's impending doom as much as we have been lately. So anything we can do to just get the nervous system to calm down, to relax, to change gears for a little while, this is why we do things like continue to focus on the work or sign up for a, a self-tape challenge with casting directors or do the self-tape challenge that's for 30 days in the Facebook group or do writing sprints where you log in with people and, and do writing for an hour straight. The reason that these community projects and these group efforts are coming together so effortlessly right now is because we need these things that help us take our mind off the stuff that feels like it's trying to kill us at every moment and instead focus on what we can control, bring a little bit of levity to the day, let the nervous system stand down for just a minute and feel safe. It'll come back. It'll come back because you'll see a tweet. You'll hear some news. Someone will bring up a topic. It'll, it'll always come back. And I like to say that I'm very grateful for it when it comes back because I'm able to say, you know, for mine, it manifests as a pain spike. And I had a massive pain spike this weekend. And I was laid out on the couch, just a mess. And I was crying and I was upset. And I was like, I thought I had all this worked out. I thought I'd been doing such good work with my mind, body, wellness, and this healing journey that I've been on for the past couple of years. Why am I in so much pain? And I'm like, because this is where my body communicates that there's a part of my brain that feels incredibly unsafe right now. So then that just means, thank it. It's doing its job. It's letting you know something's not right. Something's not normal. This isn't okay. I go, I know. It's not okay, and we still have to live through it. So the best chance we have of living through it is focus on gratitude, focus on things that are working. It's not put your head in the sand about what's wrong. It's just focus on a tiny little bit of work that you can get done for even 10 minutes to give your brain a break. It's like when a loved one is dying. You cannot sit at their bedside and feel all the pain of watching someone end their life you, you cannot sit there 24 seven and feel that without having to step away, take a break, go eat a bite, hear a joke, laugh, spend time doing anything else and then come back to that. So I wanted to start off our meeting today with that. So you have resources available to you. One more that I want to share. I shared this in one of my meetings today uh, that I had with an entrepreneurial group. You're welcome, Thelma. It's absolutely my pleasure. Um, where we were specifically working on how, how do we get things to calm down when we're just so, so, so keyed up. 
one of my favorite tactics is using your thumb, tap your fingers in order, and then in reverse order. So if we're going one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Got that? As I do that, I feel a tingle of energy rush down my spine and go swirl around like my root chakra. Like it's amazing that what this does is helps my brain say, oh, hang on, I have a task. I have a task, oh, and I gotta remember to do the double tap on the outside one before I start in the other direction. Okay, and then there are advanced moves of this where you're to use one hand going outside in and the other one going inside out. That one's easy because you're actually hitting the same finger on both hands. And then the super advanced move is to start pinky on this side and point your finger on this side and move. Ha! Ah, this one's really hard because you want to make your fingers do the same thing on each hand rather than going left to right because that feels weird to the brain. And what's happening is we're crossing the meridian. This is where we end left brain, right brain, right here. And it all just becomes wiring that is firing all over the place in the brain. It's stimulating thought in a whole new way. And when you do that, you find that your brain is communicating in a more creative and resourceful way than ever before. And when that happens, it allows you to problem solve in a whole new way. So try that, try that, try that, try that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, fine, all you pianists already got this, then you ain't got no stress. Good, good for you. But for everybody else, please work on this, allow your brain to go like, why can't I get this to go from this direction to this direction? Why, why does it want to fight? And realize that as you train your brain into this, you're doing bilateral stimulation. You're doing things that allow you to cross the hemisphere within your brain, which is a fantastic way to allow you to see a larger field of vision, to allow you to have more creative solutions to pull from. And right now we can all use a little bit of that. So thank you for going on this little bit of a journey with me at the top of our call. I'm so glad to see y'all here. For those of you who started at the first of the year on day one, you are nearing the end of your first 100 day lap through the curriculum. Woo! How's it feeling? I'd love to hear from you. Please raise your hand if you'd like to chat uh, verbally. We will unmute you and let you chat with us here. I believe I've got Aaron helping in uh, the back end of things here to direct you through what to say and how to get live on the call. There's a little hand raise button uh, here on Zoom, but you um, can also type in the Q&A box. Let me see, I think I have a Q&A box lit up already. I do. Tarina wants to know, how long do we have access to the replay of these videos after the 100 days? Okay, so Trina, I'm not sure if you chose the lifer enrollment or if you're doing month to month. Um, so let me answer first, if you chose lifer, uh, as long as this pro program exists, you have access to this program. Perfect, okay, great, thank you, thank you. For those who chose month to month, you have till day 120 of your membership and then on day 121 the $30 a month starts in and as long as you're paying in you are welcome to have the run of the place the 100 days the vault the private facebook group for grads only uh, all the new things that we're adding in you can explore another track uh, you can repeat the 100 days or just revisit the ones that you'd like. And of course, as we continue to add and change and develop things, you're welcome to partake in all of that as a part of your membership. These specific replays, we decided we're going to keep up for the calendar year. So what that means is for 2020, you will have all of these Zooms that we've done as a part of 2020 so far. And then we're also going to do one a month for May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, uh, so that we will always have at least, at least a monthly 
way to check in with each other like this and answer any questions that you have, do any deep dives. This is on top of any like Facebook lives that we do in the private group or things like that that are a little less planned. Um, and all of those are actually already on my calendar. If you go to bonniegillespie.com slash events, and uh, I believe Erin can pop that link in the chat for y'all as well. Um, you can always just go through my calendar and see when all of this is planned and get it put out on your calendar. Um, but we decided that once we get to the top of 2021 with probably another new live round with the faster, more frequent Zooms, we will take the 2020 Zooms and put them in an archive. Um, this breathwork thing, though, and the uh, bilateral stimulation stuff, if that was really helpful for you, we can edit that into a standalone uh, to make that available just as a page in the vault uh, so that you'll have access to that if that is feeling like something that would be a good resource for you, because I'm certainly happy uh, to, to provide that for you. Uh, yes, absolutely. You can you can absolutely start your days uh, all over again. There's going to be a button when you get to the vault that is called uh, restart my hundred days. And when you hit the big red button, it actually begins your hundred day experience again and gets the emails coming to you as a daily reminder with the songs and the links and everything. And it also allows you to pick another track to have it uh, measured out to you within that same schedule of your like 16 days in and then every uh, what is it, 15 days from there, I think is how we how we time that, like every, yeah, on day 16 and then every 15 days thereafter, which means for those of you who started January 1st, you have another track day opening up to tomorrow. But this one is basically a wrap up of what the big takeaways are from the entire track experience. And for those who are like, I'm really behind in tracks, that's okay. They stay open for you. Um, but we, we will allow you when you get into the vault to choose a different track from the one that you just did and call and do what's called fast track. And the fast track will then allow you to speed experience a track outside of the 100 day experience. Um, and so it's not every day, but it's uh, every few days so that you're able to, to get that coming to you a little faster if you wanted to explore some of the tracks that you didn't get to on this initial round. Cool, cool, cool. Kelly says, I'm loving it because it's not the end. Amen, girl. Amen. Okay, good. I'm seeing y'all saying yes, please. Yes, please for the standalone uh, and all that. Okay, cool. We can do that. We can do that. Not a problem. We will do that. Bradley says the hundred days was supposed to deepen on actor topics, but what happened is super deep with mindset. Holy cow. I was great, but with everyone freaking out, I had to add tapping to my program and thanks for the finger tapping too. You're welcome, Bradley. Yeah. You know, I, it's so funny because the, the, the actor work does go pretty deep here. It, it really does. Like the idea of taking things way beyond just the targeting an agent or knowing your brand. I mean, think, think of how much more you know about your brand and who you are to your buyers now that you've done so much enoughness work and you've really studied what the network's brands are. You've learned more about showrunners. You've connected with people that are your pace cars and people that you look to as leaders and lighthouses in this business and you've allowed yourself to get really clear on who you want to be as a leader in this industry and what shape that needs to take for you. As all of that gets clearer and as your enoughness gets stronger throughout this process, you find that your brand makes more sense and things that you may have pushed against when you were getting early results to your, your type and brand survey, you're able to go, I see where that is emerging and where people were actually spotting in me the things that I wasn't yet ready to walk into. And we've seen people go on some major next tier journeys just as a, a, a side effect to what they were able to deepen within this work here. Uh, it's also why you see people continue to do a lap of the hundred that they come back and do it. Like I'm on my fourth lap. I'm on my fifth lap. I'm on my sixth lap because things start to land differently when you're at different tiers. And obviously our industry is about to change significantly. Um, and we are about to have a renaissance of, oh my God, all the content that needs to be created to make up for the gap that we're about to experience when we run out of everything that has already been produced and edited. And obviously people are doing their best to get things edited uh, and pushed out even now, way ahead of schedule. We're gonna learn how fast production can go, it can go a lot faster than it likes to make us think that it can. And there is going to be a massive surge in production. And what a fantastic time to make sure all your shit's correct. 
to get everything ready so that the second the buyers are like, okay, the lights are back on, you are at the top of their list because you were doing stuff right now, because you're showing up for all the different challenges and events and collaborations and people are producing. I don't know if y'all saw Ninja Tanya K. Uh, she posted out on Facebook. I think she also posted it at, uh, at Instagram and Twitter that she, she produced a film that was entirely shot by drone from people's windows leaning out and speaking with each other and then coming within and seeing what's going on inside. And then the drone goes to the next. And this is something that she was able to churn out and in no time, the trailer for it, she didn't finish the, the entire project, but the trailer, the, the first look, the concept piece for it out of this world. And I encourage you to really start thinking creatively about what can be done so that I am perceived as someone who can be counted on no matter what's going on that my talent is a part of the, of the equation and the conversation no matter what. And collaborating with one another, getting yourself tape set up better than it's ever been, getting your tools in their correct place right now, making sure that everything feels exactly right and on brand, uh, never a better time. Uh, Bradley says, true, I didn't want to do the sexy thing, LOL, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Okay, Emily says, I didn't plan it this way, but I started working with an in real life audition coach almost at the same time I signed up for this. And I dropped off here a lot recently, but there was so much mindset work that, I, that was parallel to the work I had to do with my coach. And wow, I didn't realize how much I already had in there to work with. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Emily. Thank you for sharing. Awesome, awesome. Indeed, Kelly is saying the trailer for my web series, Perry Street, came out yesterday. So excited. And yay, Kathy. Oh, I have to scroll up to see Kathy. Kathy, oh, shooting a film on Zoom this week. Awesome. Not surprised. Hey, Janet, make sure you change your uh, drop down to uh, all panelists and attendees so that your uh, awesome words are seen by all the peoples. Trina says, would love the finger exercise of standalone. Yeah, I got you. I got y'all covered. Uh, and Jay is saying I've gotten to February. I'm not sure. Oh, I guess you, you're counting on a calendar rather than number of days. Um, but wherever you are, you're right where you're supposed to be. You're right where you're supposed to be. You're here on today's live Zoom. You are connecting with fellow artists. You are connecting with fellow creatives. You are connecting with yourself. You are giving yourself this space and this time, and you're being fully present, hopefully. Um, and we're here to answer any questions that you have. I know some of you uh, really enjoyed some of the different ways of looking at some of the woo-woo stuff that was in the most recent few days for those who uh, started the 100 at the first of the year. Um, and I know I gave things over to Keith for a couple days in the dojo, which was a lot of fun. I always enjoy it when he takes things on. Flaviana is saying on Friday the 3rd, folks in the UK will be pushing their show reel via the hashtag show reel share day. That is awesome, Flaviana. That is so, so, so awesome. Awesome, awesome. Love that. The hashtag is show real share day. Fantastic. That's so good. Yes. Amplify that. Amplify that. Definitely. I just today in Instagram, uh, and, and Flaviana says that's on Twitter, just so you know. The hashtag is for Twitter. Okay, great. Thank you for clarifying. Um, on our, uh, or in my, my Instagram stories just today, I shared the uh, We Audition account. And y'all know we've talked about them for years. They used to be called We Rehearse, and now they're called We Audition. But the idea behind it is it's virtual scene partners. So when you are in a position that you need a scene partner, you need a reader, and you don't have anybody available, you can go to We Rehearse, or now We Audition, and um, sign up to get a scene partner, a reader who's available on call to join you virtually and be the reader for your piece. And so this is incredibly effective when you have auditions and you need someone to help. And they also of course have higher end packages where you can pay to get coached as a part of that. And it's a fantastic survival job for actors who have flexibility and know the tech because then you can stay available to be a reader for everybody who might need you. And it's a fantastic way to have some extra income coming in. Well, they have a series of casting directors, agents, managers, directors, producers, buyers, who are donating their time to do um, these workshops virtually right now. And if you go to the We Audition Instagram page, you will or their profile, you will see just a block 
of all these events that are going on with all these different buyers and how to sign up and how to get things going and how to move your stuff forward and how to get on the radar of all these buyers. It is a fantastic time to make sure that you are connecting with all these fabulous people uh, and upping your game. And of course, y'all have all been doing all this work the whole time because we bake it right into the curriculum. Uh, let's see, Moodcaster always has something similar, uh, also has something similar, I think, says Kelly. Uh, very cool. Flaviana says, uh, lots of casting directors in the UK are meeting with actors for free. Uh, lots of love towards We Audition right now. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like right now, Zoom and Dropbox and companies like We Audition and a whole bunch of virtual services are having like massive growth and are hiring tons of people uh, because this is the time when uh, everybody is using all of these tools and they're making sure that they have the resources uh, to support all the people that are using all of these tools. So the fact that I hope you have already taken advantage of moments during the curriculum where we've encouraged you to get your self-tape set up, that here's the kind of equipment we recommend. I, someone was talking about how ring lights right now are exploding and making, not, not physically exploding, like pe they are, people are making so much money selling and reselling ring lights. And of course, we don't recommend the ring light. We recommend the panel light, which I don't have turned on right now, specifically because I, I have the sun, I'm good. But this is a way superior light uh, and it's also um, way more affordable. But this is obviously for desk. There are smaller LED lights that you can use for your for your mobile. Um, but anyway, so let's see. Laura has said, I'm extremely confused. I've been feeling okay, or so I thought, with the whole virus that shall not be named. Uh, well, it, we know what it is. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, ac accepting of the challenges and facing what I can control. Prior to that, I was on par with the 100 days and maybe a day behind. Now, although I spend eight hours in front of my computer, I'm suddenly way behind. I can't go anywhere, so why am I suddenly so behind? So, Laura, I don't know if you were on at the very top of the call, uh, but if not, make sure that you check back in and watch it when the replay goes up in a little while. But I specifically was talking about the balance between executive function and the amygdala. And when the amygdala is in charge too much of the time, it absolutely changes our relationship with time. It changes our relationship with time. It changes our relationship with space. This is actually a trauma construct. And trauma can be anything from big T trauma, like generational shit, like what we're experiencing right now, which I'm going to be writing about this for the Bond Blast that'll go out late tonight. Um, that, you know, we, we have the big traumas that everybody can agree, yes, that happened and it happened to a, a whole generation of us, to little T traumas that are just um, someone said something really cruel to you when you were very young and it got planted in and stayed a part of your life and nothing like extremely bad happened to you, but something bad got implanted and then it creates a trauma loop in the brain. Anytime that we are in a situation of, of trauma, no matter what level and no diminishment on little T, big T, trauma is trauma. As far as the brain is concerned, it's all fucking trauma. It's all trying to kill us. What happens is the brain just locks down on what resources it can use. And so that's part of the reason that what we do in having that conversation between the amygdala and the executive function of the brain is we try and get the amygdala to not be on so much. Like it, it's not in charge so much that we really want to try and get it to relax so that we can use the other parts of our brain that need to be helping right now so that we can have a broader perspective on exactly what it is that's going on in our lives so that we are more creative in our response because the field of vision actually narrows when we are in a state of anxiety or panic. And so the reason that having eight hours a day in front of your computer, Laura, is like not yielding eight hours worth of work or results is because your amygdala is the one in charge of how you use that time. And all it wants to do is say, you know, we're dying, right? You know, we're dying, right? You know, we're dying. Wait, did, did you just clear your throat? Oh my God, you have the thing. And it's like, you get into this place where you're going, but I know I'm okay, but there's a part of your brain that is absolutely 100% certain that you are not okay and that no one is okay and no one will ever be okay. And it's super easy to fire that loop up and stay addicted to it if you don't pull rank and say, my executive function is going to be in charge for a little bit because I just need to give my nervous system a fucking break. 
And so that's part of the tactic that we talked about at the, at the top. So most importantly, and this is a big part about what the bond blast is going to cover, uh, so make sure you check your inbox for that in a few hours, uh, is that we are ha all having very strong emotions, but one of the worst things we're doing right now is having secondary emotions and tertiary emotions, and those emotions are making us become our own bullies. Because we're not just allowing ourselves to feel grief or pain or sorrow or fear or stress. We are immediately feeling that and then something else comes in and says, what's wrong with you? There are people who have it so much worse. What are you crying about? There's, you are so privileged. You don't even realize you're privileged. You fucking ungrateful. You know what? Like, and so there's the secondary emotion that jumps in. And then there's a third level emotion that comes in and says, hey, be easy on yourself. It's, it's so hard right now. We're all suffering. We're all scared. It's okay. Every emotion is allowed right now. And then a fourth emotion comes on and piles on that and goes, you suck. You're spinning out. Every fear that you have about yourself is correct. Anxiety, 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 loop, loop, loop. Those emotions outside the first one are the bad guy. Because the first one is just, we're feeling what we're feeling. And when we become observers of our feelings and just let them exist, we actually have a chance of seeing ourselves through it. But when we start to pile on with secondary, tertiary, and so on emotions, we really do make it super hard for ourselves. So I'm going to recommend that you just give yourself a whole lot of grace, that you just give yourself the room for, I'm actually not sure what the right next move is. And I've been holding myself to a standard that made sense three weeks ago. But today, the rules are different. If you were with us at the beginning, you heard me talk about how I usually wall off Mondays and do not engage with my business. I do not see clients. I absolutely do not put on a bra or makeup or get on camera. My Mondays are absolutely off limits and have been for years. But right now, the rules are different. And so right now, you're expecting yourself to sit at a computer and have the same relationship with your incoming that you had three weeks ago. And everything is different now. The rules have completely changed. So have some grace with yourself and allow yourself to have a different relationship with yourself and your technology and the incoming right now. And give yourself the space for it to be different. It's okay. There's no rush. We're not going anywhere. We, we don't have to shut things down. We don't have to lay people off. We are able to actually keep this up and running and continue to support y'all. We are able to do that. So we're not going away. You have this. And so we want you to feel supported and really give yourself a lot of credit for just showing up here today. Even if you're like, I'm so far behind, I don't know what to do. There's no behind. There are people on this call who've been with us since 2016 in this program who still haven't done all 100 days. It's okay. It doesn't diminish the value of what you have gotten out of this if you don't get to everything. It's, it's like being at a buffet and there is so much delicious food. You don't fail just because you didn't eat a bite of everything. Like that would be ridiculous. You would never subject yourself to that. You would go, I got what I wanted and what I needed off of the buffet and I had a good meal. I'm happy and then let the rest go. So just start by being gentle with yourself. What we don't want is for people to become their own bully, uh, which a lot, I'm seeing a lot of people do this right now. Like, you know, you don't, you don't have the outside stimulation of other people and other people's opinions in the same way. And so you start beating yourself up and becoming your own bully. And I'm like, could you, could you not do that? Could you just, just don't do that. Uh, Laura has come back and said, you're so right. I'm always saying I could be a nurse or a doctor or underlying condition. Haven't cried or shown any emotion to my kids or husband. Laura, I would play with that. I would, I would ask yourself, you know, what, what is the benefit to not showing emotion? Uh, if right now, and especially as we're about to head into this cancer moon, you may find that showing emotion is exactly what you need and what they need right now. And it's a safe place to have those emotions and to don't, don't stress or worry about them spinning out of control. Uh, because as an artist, you have strong emotions. That's, that's part of what being an artist, what part, part of what being a storyteller is, that we have strong emotions and we know what to do with them. We know where to put them into our art. We know how to put them into our storytelling. Um, let's see, Pam has said, is Captain Amygdala the reason why I'm feeling like my chosen profession feels trivial at this time? 
I'm finding it challenging to be creative. Yeah, Pam, yes. Here's the way I like to think of the amygdala is that this part of the brain is the ultimate suits in the writer's room. And y'all have heard me say no suits in the writer's room quite a few times. Those of you who are in JFDI know that I talk about this a lot. No suits in the writer's room. Because when we're in those creative spaces where we're imagining all the what ifs and all the possibilities and we're creating expansive ideas and coming up with unique, amazing, wonderful stories to tell and ways to tell it, we are just in the throes of what creative spitballing is and it feels so good there's so much yes and it's like you know amazing jazz it's just a a, a collaboration that we have no idea where it's going to go but it all feels so good the amygdala is the suits coming into the writer's room and going you can't do this we don't have the budget this will never work this is going to fail the amygdala is the ultimate voice of you can't do this the amygdala is the wet blanket on every expansive dream. The amygdala is the, my job is to keep you safe and small voice. So anything that you've ever said to yourself to try and criticize yourself or keep you from doing things is probably amped up and ramped up by your amygdala, which means right now the amygdala can best get you to stop growing to stop the expansion that a part of your brilliant executive function brain knows you're being called to do, the amygdala can make you stay safe and small by going, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, there, it's futile, there's no use, there's no use, there's no point, what, who cares what you create, nobody's looking at you, doesn't matter anyway, this is worthless, your, your, your work isn't doing any good in the world, that for sure is amygdala thanking you for staying safe and small. So the work is, thank you for trying to keep me safe and small. Thank you, amygdala. If you do it while you're doing this, all the better. Amygdala, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate the messaging that you are making loud and clear. I hear you. I allow you those thoughts. I know that that's a part of how you are arranged in my brain. I know that that's part of your function. You're doing a really good job. However, I am important. My work has value. I am absolutely here with a gift and a message. And there is purpose in my storytelling. It has value. It provides levity to some of those people who are on the front lines. Because what's the first thing that everybody does What's the first thing that everybody does after they get home from saving lives and doing all the heroic things that people like me will never experience like that? The first things they do when they get home and hang the keys up, toss off all the clothes, they pick up the remote and they turn on the TV. And they don't turn on the news because they've seen it. They've been at the hospital. They've seen it. They know, they know what's happening. They don't need more of that. They need entertainment. And they need entertainment because it feels good to them. So your work is important. And part of executive func function's job is to say to Captain Amygdala, I like the name that you've given yours, to say to Captain Amygdala, I know you think you're the captain, but you're not. You're, you're, not, you're not the captain. You, you can be the rudder. You, you, Amygdala, can be the rudder on this boat. You absolutely can change the direction of things if I let you, but the captain is executive function and the captain is going to dictate that we are gonna continue forward even though you're scared, even though you feel that this is futile, even though you believe that there's no point to any of this. We're gonna keep going because storytelling is important. So Pam, give yourself a little love with that and compassion. Uh, Janet says, I'm doing, I'm gonna hug myself right now. I'm gonna hug myself. Yes, giving give some love to Pam for sure, uh, honey. It's my pleasure. I'm absolutely. It's absolutely my pleasure. Th this is what this call needed to be about. So so it is. So it is. Uh, Janet says I'm doing a lot of self taping, workshops and live workshops and yoga and ballet on Zoom. I know, right? To be a stockholder in Zoom right now. Oh my God. Zoom. Oh, but last night, pause. Last night, I was on a live Zoom with uh, Uncabaret which was phenomenal. They were doing a comedy and variety show 
uh, with music and they had like 10, 15 different acts uh, last night on Zoom. And there were like 340 people on, on the Zoom at the top count. Um, and it went on for like two hours, but they are Zoom newbies. So they didn't know how to disable screen share. So apparently there's this new type of terrorism going around in the world of Zoom. And I say terrorism with all joking and mocking um, where Someone will join a meeting, they'll get the, the number out on the internet because people put it out there and say, hey, we're gonna be doing a broadcast of blah, 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 at whatever o'clock, and they put out the number because they want people to come and watch. But these people have the free account of Zoom or have the, or they're too new newbie that they don't know how to change the setting. And so screen share is enabled on every attendee's account, which means anybody at any time can hit screen share and take over the meeting. So here we are, hundreds of people laughing, enjoying the music. It's like this amazing show. It's like going so well. And you know, there are tech issues, of course, but in general, it's going really, really well. And someone takes over the screen and blasts some hardcore porn on all of us. And then every time the mods keep trying to figure out how to turn off the screen share, they just do it again. And they just do it again. And they just do it again. And I'm like, y'all, you have to kick them out while they're sharing their screen. You can't stop the screen share because you want to stop the graphic porn and then kick them out because in the time it takes you to do that, they're already back on the screen again. It was hilarious. And of course, I'm sitting here going, screen grab, screen grab, screen grab, screen grab, because I'm cracking up. I'm like losing my shit watching all these famous comedians and amazing singers, songwriter, musicians, like all in, they're just going, oh my God. And I'm like, this, th these are the moments. These are the moments that a tech geek like me lives for. Hilarious. Um, that was my little sidebar on, on Zoom and the new form of terrorism. Is, and so this is apparently called a Zoom bomb. And, uh, and that's now a thing. So thank you for the new vernacular 2020. You've given us so many new words and concepts and emotions already this year. Back to you, Janet. Thank you for my little sidebar there. Um, the days are flying, the hours pass, but I notice in spite of anxiety rising up a lot now and again, sure, I think I'm more forgiving of myself and what I'm achieving and accepting of what I am doing and its value. Janet, I love this. Thank you for sharing this. This is something that I'm really noticing that there are people who are giving themselves so much more grace than they've ever given before. So much more self love than they've ever considered bestowing upon themselves before because we're all kind of in this like, what does it all fucking matter anyway? What, what does it matter? What, what is life? Like there is this bit of surrender going on that is so beautiful that almost couldn't have happened except for the fact that we're in this situation. There is so much beauty that has come from this forced time with ourselves, this forced introspection. Uh, sober me is very glad that this is happening three and a half years into my sobriety because drinker me would have spent this entire time just drinking all the vodka because that was my coping mechanism for, for let's face it, anything, anything. Stub my toe, have a drink. You know, had a good day, got more money than I thought was coming in, have a drink. Like there, there was just everything. It was like, why do you drink? Because it's a day that ends in Y and I drink. So I'm so glad that now that is not a thing in my life because I know what it's like to have to face myself at my worst. I know what it's like to have to go within. I know what it's like to actually wrangle with my hardest emotions and not have a buffer for them. I know, because I took away that buffer from myself three and a half years ago, thank God. And by doing that, I know that the stuff that I'm going through right now, that everyone's going through, I have the capability to come on and lead because, because I have a muscle for this. I have a muscle for this because I do this all the time. But I love getting to see people who may have never actually spent this kind of time with themselves, really getting to feel, oh, this is who I am. This is how I feel. I was carrying around a lot of other people's feelings about who I am in the world. And now that it's just me and I'm really alone with my feelings and my thoughts, I'm a completely different person than I thought I was. I think that's amazing. I, I think that's beautiful that that's happening for so many people right now. So Janet, I appreciate you and applaud you. And thank you for sharing this. I really do. 
no, it's fine. You said not really a question, just a feeling. I love it. It's totally fine. It's totally, no, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Aisha, hello, love. I've been giving myself a touch of challenge during this time in terms of production and putting things out there. Love it. I feel a bit of that futility that I often feel of not being seen, though now and now and again during this time, there's been that first responder who got a laugh and who sends me a message. And that lets me know that these things I'm doing really do matter. That being said, okay, don't, don't rush to the that being said. I'm gonna read the line before that one more time. That lets me know that these things I'm doing really do matter. They do, they do. Sit in that, sit in that. Don't rush to the next thought. Art matters, storytelling matters, creative expression matters. Okay, all right, good. That being said, I'm trying to get clear on the next right moves in all this for someone who isn't famous yet, kind of finding where there's a space opening up that makes sense to be in. Any thoughts on all that? So Aisha, are you able to unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about the work you're doing? Um, like share a little bit about what, what it is and what kind of feedback you're getting so we could talk about how to make the most of this. Um, let me see, it looks like you are possibly, possibly. Hello. Hi. <laughs> So, um, okay, so I guess, I mean, really, you know, I've been doing this daily thing called um, 30 Days of Clean. It's been super fun. It's these short uh, 20 to 30 second videos of hand washing and singing, it's crazy outfits, ridiculous. <laughs> um, and so that's, I've been posting those every day and that's been going really well and people just, you know, it cheers them up for sure. And that's been really cool. But of course, you know, it doesn't have the reach, you know, that it would if a ton of people knew what I was doing. And I'm just trying to figure out, like, I, I guess during this time, well, one thing I'm thinking about is at the end of this 30 days, I feel like people, at least, you know, the few people who do turn into me, which is not that few, but, you know, they're kind of expecting this to continue <laughs> um, on the one hand. So it's like, well, what next? And then um, the other thing is like, how, you know, how to, I mean, in this, these colossal changes that we're experiencing in this time, there definitely are going to be places to be and nooks and crannies to find that are going to be a good move that makes sense. And I'm, so I'm just trying to think about what those things are that could be, you know, meaningful in general and to one's career and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So what's your, what's your social networking platform of choice? Where do you feel most at home? Well, I mean, Instagram has the biggest follow, uh, right. for sure. Well, and, and I'm guessing you enjoy it also. It's not just like, oh, I hate that it has the biggest following. <laughs> well, I, no, I don't hate that. I mean, you know. Well, I need to make sure because the place where I got the biggest following, I'm like, really? Uh, so, I mean, it's important to know. Um, the reason I'm asking is because if you could share a bit of it at the place where you already have the biggest following and where you enjoy connecting with your people uh, and come up with a hashtag for it and start go back to all the past ones that you've already put up and mm -hmm. get that hashtag in there so that when someone comes across a new one, as you put things out and then say to your Instagram following, Hey y'all, please share this. Please, I'm going to go live at whatever o'clock and do an episode live. Please invite your friends. I'd love to see y'all. And then cross post that over to IGTV so that it can live beyond that and make sure to talk during it about the hashtag blah, blah, so that people can then look up that hashtag and see all the episodes. You're basically curating a channel or a playlist. And of course, if you're also posting to YouTube, you've got a channel or playlist there for it as well, where you're able to point to the consistency of that and the growth that you created over time when you're months from now sitting down with a potential agent or a buyer of any kind who wants to know what kinds of things you can get passionate about and put together. 
Yeah, um, it actually does already have a, a consistent hashtag through all the episodes, so it wouldn't be hard to, you know, use and that. Are you telling people, use the hashtag? Are you telling people, thank, are you going and thanking people? Okay, one of the jobs that I have to do, which I actually just started paying someone on my team to do it because it was, it's so like a low joy item for me. And I like to do all the like massive joy items that I can. And I like everyone on my team to do massive joy items as well. But then there are some <laughs> things that are just like, nobody gets joy out of doing this, but we got to fucking do it. So of course, then there's yeah, yeah, yeah. exchange for doing it. You know? <laughs> so one of the things is um, we have ads that run out on Facebook and there are people who share them or tag friends in them because they're just for free challenges. Like I've got the free 11 day challenge. I've got the free dip kit. I've got um, the free replay of JFDI with Vaughn where we did the five steps for bringing in value and, and hopefully money while you are in a weird situation right now and have this time to maybe get an idea off the ground. Um, so it's just gives, 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 but people share and they uh, tag friends in them. And one of the jobs is go thank them for doing that. Because mm. anytime someone is amplifying the message, we thank them because we want to encourage that kind of behavior. And we also, of course, want to let people know that what they did, that action has value. And so it's not enough to just say, well, I've got a hashtag and I use it consistently. It's, mm. are you thanking people when they use it? Are you showing up? Are you following back that hashtag? to then take a look at where people are doing their own versions. And is it a hashtag that other people can get behind, not just one that identifies you, so that you're actually creating a movement as opposed to creating a brand identifier just for you? Yes, yeah, see, I was hoping for that. And, you know, um, a friend of mine actually had contacted me about doing her own series and, you know, hashtagging back and, you know, credit. But I don't think she ever got around to it because it is a little bit labor intensive to yeah. <laughs> make videos like this. So. Um, that hasn't quite happened though on Facebook, people do share and I do, you know, heart them back and comment back and stuff like that. Um, Great. I would say the next step is it, it involve them in the production process. If there's mm -hmm. a way to do, I'm going to live stream behind the scenes while I'm producing an episode mm -hmm. and let that be a peek behind the curtain and let people talk about, oh, that's so cool. I wondered how you do that. Or, you know, again, not knowing what your episode entails necessarily. I don't know how easy this would be to do, but I it's found- It's super hard. <laughs> yeah, it's super hard, but yeah. If there's something you could do that is a reward to right, those yeah. who are early adopters and make them feel even more a part of the production process, I think you stand a really good chance of getting yeah. this to get picked up and in the stream of some of the people that you're hoping to catch the eye of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, yeah. That's and the, Aisha, everybody wants to know what is the hashtag? Oh, it's hashtag 30 days of clean. Um, and my Instagram is at Aisha Adamo, my name, uh, which I think shows up. So you might yes. know how to spell it. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah, drop that in the chat as well, just so that okay. everybody can, yeah, Ninja Aaron is getting some things popped in there. And is 30 spelled out or 3 -0, the number? 3 -0. 3-0, Aaron, can you change that in the, or not change it, can you repost these? You know, everybody's following you, following you, following, following, following. You'll be like, look, I got all these people. See, that's the that. part of it, just being in this environment and talking about it, like making yeah. it known that this is a thing. And we just had self-promo Saturday in the Facebook group. I don't know if you've noticed, we got like 12 and a half thousand members of that group and a self-promo Saturday thread that goes up every week from the amazing Lenka and Aaron and the team putting together this amazing space for us to connect in this group, you should be talking about it there. You should be I know I should, yeah. yeah. All of that, yes, 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 for sure. Yeah. Kelly, put it on your calendar, Well, because right now time has no meaning, like nobody knows what day it is anymore right now. Because it was so funny, we were talking about the 100 days and I was like, nobody even can think 100 days right now, because it's like yesterday felt like 100 days, like this is not even a thing, so for sure. But put it on your calendar, a little reminder to do that, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Brooks, these chats are always, uh, up with the replays every time, sweetheart, every time I put the PDF of the chat up every single time. You just need to go to the replay page. They're all there, sweetheart. Cool. So Aisha, do you have some ideas of some yeah, ways that you can for sure. start to amplify this a little bit and involve yeah. your existing audience a little more? Definitely. Definitely. Stay consistent. Uh, and if you've got that friend who's like, oh, I thought I would do it, but I changed my mind or it was harder than I thought it was going to be, see what you can do to help her get hers off the ground as well. 
because mm -hmm. definitely that reciprocal audience thing really helps grow the fan base and makes it more fun for everybody. Sure, sure. Cool. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm going to go check you out. <laughs> Very cool. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Heck yeah. Cool. Anybody else need to chat or have a question? You can raise your hand using the little blue hand hand thing over here in the Zoom, or you can type in the Q&A box. I know the chat is like going bonkers, so I'm not totally on top of it, but right now I could look and see if anybody's got anything to say uh, in there that I could see. It looks like y'all are all still doing Instagram, supporting one another. Yeah, two weeks, it felt like 100 years. Yeah, Emily, that's, that's another one of the issues is that it's made it feel like our relationship with time and space has lost all meaning. Like, it's, it's almost like there's some episode of something, some movie somewhere, and it's become so many in my mind all at once now that I don't even know which one to cite. But there's this moment where like after the war, after the, the blowing up of the sun, after whatever the apocalyptic thing is, that everybody who survives kind of like goes outside and then their eyes are like, you know, blink, 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 because everything is so bright because they've been stuck inside in a bomb shelter for so long. And then they come out and they see each other for the first time. And it's just like this whole new space. Uh, and then when I see that, I start blending that into the moment uh, in the Christmas movie with the Grinch who stole Christmas where all the who's and who they'll come out after everything's stolen but they still sing and they get into a circle and hold hands and they're still singing and it's still beautiful because it doesn't matter it wasn't about the presence so I've just turned this into like this one big image that I have of like how it's going to feel when we're all back to that part of our lives but it's forever different it's forever different um it, it can't not be uh, let's see, Emily, continuing on with you. This is probably more a one-on-one -on -one thing, but is there anything else you would suggest for people who are really struggling with things like log lines and pitching? I've skipped every single one of those days. Well, Emily, the main thing I would recommend is go back and visit all those days that you skipped because certainly we could work through that stuff in a one-on-one -on -one session, but I really like the one-on-one -on -one sessions to be, let's go deeper on the work you've already done. If instead you've skipped those entirely, and then want to spend a lot of money to do a one-on-one -on -one with me to have me walk you through the stuff that's right there, because I'm, I'm just gonna use the exact same tools. Um, it just seems like it's a not great use of uh, your resources. Um, but it can, uh, you can do whatever you want, of course. Of course, if you wanna book a private and do log line and pitching and bio and about me and all that stuff as a part of a private session, of course, that's why we offer discounts to y'all as members of Getting Gear so that it's not quite as expensive to do the one-on-one -on -one with me uh, as members. But uh, the, I would start with just go do the work of those days and take the opportunity to work out in the comments, like I, I'm not crazy about this, but here's what I have so far. And let us get in there and roll up our sleeves and do some of the work with you. There is a lot of exchange going on in the comments about log lines and bios and about me and so tell me about yourself like the, those conversations if you really there are a few of you who love to read every damn comment and i love y'all because you're like me you're a completist you're like i will read everything because this is part of the work i will read it i will read everything i'm like that's so me that is so me i'm like i will miss nothing i will see it all oh my god and in a way that's not necessarily the most healthy way to be but it, whatever it's it's my thing i will i will read everything but engage a little, like do, do a little more of that conversation in that space so that we can do the workout together. Like that's part of why we really like to see the dojo as a gym, that you're here to get a workout and everybody's workout looks differently. Everybody's workout has a little variation. Everybody's workout is something that is unique to them. It's, it's a different experience for each person. I would say don't, need it to look a certain kind of way and also know that there's work that you do on a brand day that is way more informative about a log line or that perhaps it's when you got your bestie to write your letter of recommendation or introducing you to an agent and had that exercise come through with all these kinds of words your log line may be sitting in there the the words that others have used to describe you may be the best richest source of words for your log line and you've overlooked them because you're just looking at 
the one day rather than seeing this as a gym with all the equipment and all the different workouts and all the spotting that's available with us here with you. So that's what I would recommend is go back and revisit those days that you've skipped because the material in there exists for a reason and it does build upon itself, which is why we do things in the order that we do them. Uh, because they're very, very definitely are things that go deeper, that take you in on things uh, later, because by a, a different time in the course, you've had other things that have opened up that perhaps have you looking at things just a slightly new way. Um, you're absolutely welcome, my sweetheart. Mm, absolutely welcome, my pleasure, my pleasure. Flaviana, I'm just loving, I choose to be happy right now, particularly so right now, yeah, right, girl? And, pro and pro noia with a side of care less mind blown so much love for those days Flaviana thank you I know I was like I'm so glad the bulk of the students who are enrolled right now are in this pack of days like th that run from like 80 to 90 <sighs> there's some gold in there yeah pro noia care less I choose to be happy right now you know, the, the greatest gift I can give anyone in my life is to let them know I am 100% responsible for my level of happiness. That I may look at you and say, you make me happy. But what I really mean is, I am so happy. And as I look at you, I choose to see what in you helps me maintain that happiness. But no one can make us feel any kind of way. We, we do that for ourselves. It's all an inside job. So uh, Flaviana, I love all that. I'm so glad. Thank you, sweetheart. Linda, thank you for bringing this question here. So Linda and I um, had a chat in the comments. Uh, and I said, are you going to be on the call and able to bring this to us? So let's see, is this it or part of it? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. Uh, great talk on the amygdala to get conscious of how much is in charge. My amygdala has uh, been feeding off a of past trauma for so long, it doesn't seem to need corona. I know. I was like, oh, my amygdala is very well practiced and has a lot of things that it can bug me about. Like this thing, chump change compared to the big ticket items that my amygdala likes to use on me most of the time. So I'm with you, girl. Uh, I keep on going with new energy, though keep on going is my comfort zone. Letting go is a red alarm. Amen. Amen. Um, if you've ever read, this is a great book. If you've ever read The Tao of Pooh by Benjamin Hoff, you know the character called Busy Baxson. Uh, the Tao of Pooh is like Tao, like Taoism, uh, of Pooh as in Winnie the Pooh. Benjamin Hoff is the author. And so they basically, he writes the story of Taoism through the Hundred Acre Wood and tells the story of Christopher Robin and Pooh and Eeyore and Rabbit and all the rest. Piglet, of course. Um, it's, it's a phenomenal book. I first read it when I was like 17, 18 years old, and I traveled internationally for the first time, and I was just like, oh, this book has changed my life, and it's, it came at a very crucial age, obviously, but also it's just so freaking good. And then, yes, The Day of Piglet, which is a little harsher uh, book. Those two are really great. And when Keith and I first met 19 years ago next month, we were talking about like, what do we have on our bookshelf? Let's see, like, what kind of person are you? And we both had both Tao of Pooh and Day of Piglet. And I was like, oh, mm, mm, and others as well. But those two, I was like, okay, we're good. We're going to work. Um, but the Busy Baxson is the character in the Tao of Pooh that is uh, when, um, was it Rabbit had written Busy Baxson? on the door and Busy Baxson was, it looked like Busy Baxson. And so this character became the Busy Baxson, which is this frantic, always moving, always doing things, never stopping, never actually being present and feeling the feelings. And so I'm a very good Busy Baxson. Um, and I, I suspect Linda, you are as well. Uh, I built a home studio from old mattresses and created a voice reel. I'm remapping out my plans on a new Silver paper, love it. Uh, getting inspired by new series, love reading about connecting in new ways for me and content creation while softening the amygdala on getting our content without thinking I'll die. Yes, thank you, Bon. Uh, absolutely my pleasure, Linda. I uh, still have my question about the social bio, actress, stunt woman, singer, but it seems a bit out of the direction of today's conversation, but yes, here it is. It's totally fine, Linda, we can have this conversation. Do you wanna unmute yourself and tell everybody what the um, specifics are of that bio? Um, and how it feels like you're sending people in too many directions. If you can unmute yourself, let me see. Okay, cool. Let me find you. Let me find you. I think the team has just unmuted you. Are you able to talk? I think I am. Hi. 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 
You hear me well? I hear you. Good. So yeah, the question was uh, basically, um, what do I put in my social bio? Like, I'm trying to kind of keep away from the boring actor, singer, stunt woman, or just actor. Um, oh yeah, well, oh, that's actually another question. <laughs> that's a kind of more creative question. So this question was like, I don't want to confuse the buyers. Um, so should I put only their actor um, or also actor, stunt woman, singer, um, cat lover? <laughs> Can't you be all of those things and have it not talk anybody out of the different parts of you? Um, what do you mean? So what I mean by that is as a, what, what would you say your brand is as an actor? Like what kinds of roles are like at the center of your dartboard, like your bullseye, that stuff that's just like every day you can do it no problem, just from an actor perspective, not including um, any of the stunt work. Like what, what kind of work craft wise? Okay, uh, based on my research, um, it's a uh, cop detective, um, going by heart, <laughs> uh, mom, um, a little bit, yeah, more stern characters than actual warm characters. Uh, awesome. Also kind of um, classical, like a pianist or ballerina, um, or artistically. Um, so it's not just like when it's mom, it's like protect your mom. It's, um, yeah. Okay. I don't have a problem with any of that next to stunt woman mm -hmm. because it's all already tough. It's all mm -hmm. already heroic. It's mm -hmm. all already strong. Mm -hmm. um, if you told me that your bullseye is frail and fragile and victim and desperately in need of being rescued, I would say that kind of doesn't mesh with mm -hmm. stunt woman. Yeah. But everything you're describing from your data actually works really well with stunt woman. Yeah. Yeah, true. So even though the buyers are different, you don't run the risk that by sharing you do both, you would talk either of them out of how to understand you. Yeah. And sometimes the buyers are the same because sometimes we need an actor who can do her own stunts. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I wouldn't run away from it so much. Uh, you know, th this is where we had this conversation actually in another of uh, my programs last week, and you'll have to forgive me because I do now a jillion these Zooms a week, so I, I don't recall which conversation this was. Some of you may have been on the call um, where we talked about, like, if you have a brand that is squeaky clean, like Disney, and then your side job is selling sex toys, you may not want the two to intersect because Disney's probably not going to be too interested in a princess who has a great collection of dildos available for sale on the same website. Mm -hmm. But if you are of the brand where you, of course, would have that as a side hustle, uh, then there's no reason to hide from your actor buyers that your side job is incredibly erotic because so are you. Um, and this is where, yeah, the, the reason we were, we were having this conversation in JFEI, I now remember exactly who was in the hot seat when we were talking about this. Um, the reason we were having this conversation, it, and the reason it's so important to know that right now more than ever, it is okay to have all of this in one place, is because the rules have now forever been changed. And people who work in casting, and people who work as agents, and people who work as managers, and people who for the longest have said to actors, keep your lives separate. Like they didn't even wanna know if you had a degree in something other than acting because they felt it was so distracting from who you are as an actor. So you weren't allowed to share what you do for a side hustle, how you make money outside of acting, what degree you might have, how smart you might be. It's like, we don't wanna know any of this. We want you to be an actor. That has now forever been changed because as of now, these people who used to say that all the time are having to scramble and get other jobs. So forever is gone the judgment of the actor who still has to have a side job. And so the reason I'm using this as part of the conversation for what we're sharing here with Linda is 
if your actor brand makes sense with your side hustle or makes sense with your other special skills, which generally it should, you're fine being the whole person, having that full life, that full experience. You don't need to hide any of it from anyone. It's only if it is so completely night and day different that you risk brand confusion that you should consider using silos and separating and segregating out those bios and those bits of information about yourself. Sounds good. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. And so, because um, also singing is there and I used to, to stay on brand, uh, the the examples I would have on my website from my singing then would um, be with a strong kind of voice or um, I was gonna say what do you sing do you sing like you know Pat Benatar and Heart and like arena rock kind of boss chicks or do you sing like classical opera like what what do you what kind of singing do you do <laughs> a lot actually um, but um, yeah, so one of the examples that I have is from a street theater in which I have also like these strong female characters like Evil Queen and mm -hmm. um, uh, also um, um, that and um, uh, blues kind of thing, but also more jazzy, which can be more soft. Um, I also love Disney. I don't have anything on my website from it, um, but I'm thinking like, if I would record Disney, put it on my website, it should then also reflect like strong characters. I think so. The, like, yeah, if you yeah. went Disney, would you go, you know, the damsel in distress, the princess, or would you go like, the, you know, the evil queen? Would you go the, the bad guy with the like the Ursula story and song and things like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I love this. I would continue to pull this through the brand filter and you have a lot of great comments in the chat as well from people, yes, anding what we're talking about. Um, if you find that the singing feels like it's a little less connected, you can always list in your bio the things that go together and then, and I also sing. And then when people go, oh, tell me about that, you can go, that's over here on another site. And so you can still own it without conflating it if that yeah. feels better. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Cool. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you, Linda. You. I appreciate you coming on the call and chatting about it. Yes, me too. Well done. Well done. <laughs> woo, woo. Awesome. Yeah, these these comments in the chat are fantastic. Make sure that as yes, and as always, I will I will save it and make sure that it's available for everyone uh, with the replay. Uh, any other questions? We still have a few moments, and I'm happy to chat with any of y'all or anybody on the team. Um, Aaron, Amy, Keith, anybody got uh, anything you would like to share or chat about as we round out our day? No. <laughs> Thanks, honey. I appreciate it. Big voice of God, no. All right, fine. Fine, fine, fine. I know, he's hilarious. It's like he never talks, and then when he does, he's it's like Silent Bob. He says like one or two things, and people are like, I love Keith. I'm like, all I have to do if I want a lot of love on Instagram is put up a picture of Keith. And then people are like, oh my God, I love him so much. And I'm like, what, what the hell? It's fine. I love him too. I know, I, I know Kelly. I, I love him too. I wouldn't keep him around. But, but, but here, we've been in training for this little situation that the world is in right now for 19 years. We spend 20 hours a day together already and we work from home. So our lives haven't changed that much except that just we're Zooming a lot more because a lot more other people's lives have changed, but we're always doing this much together, like the, nothing different, um, which is great because I'm learning like we could actually give some tutorials with people who are like, I can't stand my spouse. I had no idea now that we're spending all this time together. And I'm like, oh, I can help you figure out how to wrangle that mess. I know uh, hashtag relationship goals is now like a completely different um, track. Are y'all doing the track days? Uh, I know people who are in the writer content creator track, if you've gotten to the day uh, in the track that included the masterclass from the Bunbury sisters on um, being staffed in a writer's room and so much of that vocabulary and everything, they are specifically standing by uh, and showing up in the comments to answer your questions. Um, and they are available to you. So definitely make use of that if you've not yet visited that page. Um, okay, good, good, Kelly, I'm glad. I'm glad you're going to do that. Those memes about finding out that your normal life is called quarantine totally resonate with me. Yeah, Aisha, for sure. 
for sure. I'm like, I saw one that was like, so now y'all want to know what introverts do for fun. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Oh, true. Flaviana asks, will they still be there when the tracks open up in the vault for the rest of us? Flaviana, I think so. I think so. Um, and Aaron says, totes reaching out to the Bunbury sisters once I've got my treatment for my first feature hammered out. Good. Yeah, I think, I think the answer is yes. Yeah, for sure, Bradley. Introvert heaven. I'm like, what? I only have to get dressed from here up and then do this and then I can close the camera and I'm back to my own privacy again. Like, okay, <laughs> sign me up. Uh, Trina says, to add to this, when I was in Camp Fallujah and I had stressful days, scrubs got me through. I would go into my tent slash office and just binge on episodes when I could. This industry matters. Preach it, girl. Preach it. Preach it. It's true. It's true. Um, Emily, isn't it great to know how much, how acutely you miss your friends? Like things that you might have taken for granted before. Like, wow, isn't it great? Like, it's, it's gotten so clarifying, like, what we fucking care about right now. And if you're like, no, it hasn't gotten that clear for me yet, spend some time with yourself. Turn off the internet. Turn off the television. Turn off sound. Just be and journal. Um, Amber Ray has a really good series that she's running right now. Um, it's free. Everybody's doing so much, you know, free content right now. I'm going to be doing a live stream on Thursday. I'm going to be actually doing a master class that's free and open to the public on Thursday morning. And then Thursday afternoon, I'm going to be doing a live stream at my usual places. So I'll include in the bond blast links to all of that. If y'all want to join me, if you're not like already like, Oh my God, so much Bonnie all the time already. Um, but uh, Amber Ray, she's Hey Amber Ray on Instagram. She is running a uh, 30 day journaling prompt challenge and so she provides the starting point for each day's journaling and it's things like you know find out what your anxiety wants to tell you find out what your fear wants to tell you and I was like oh we did this with Liz Gilbert these are all based off the work of Martha Beck and um, Liz brought a few of these to us in Fiji and part of the work was to write a letter from our fear to us to ourselves. Like, so it was like, you know, dear Bonnie, I'm your fear and here's what I'm here to tell you. And so much of the stress in our lives and our emotions comes from trying to clamp that shit down. Like, I don't, I don't want to hear what my fear wants to say. I don't want to, I don't want to hear what my anxiety wants to hear because I'm worried it's going to overtake me. I'm worried that it's going to um, just engulf everything. And if instead we can go, I am ready to hear you fear, what do you need to say? And then we just get in receiving mode to let the fear tell us what it's feeling. Uh, I wrote pages in this exercise with Liz in, um, in Fiji. And as I read back the pages and went, these are fears I didn't know I had. And there were things that I thought I was afraid of that didn't make the list. And I was like, that's interesting. But I had convinced myself I knew what I was afraid of. And I, in some cases, I was like, no, not even close. And... The thing that's interesting about this kind of work is we learn that fear is universal. There are very few things that we um, make different than the rest of the humans on the planet when it comes to fear. Our, our fears are, in fact, primal. The amygdala is, in fact, in charge, which is why they are basic, they are simple, but they are massive because they come from primal brain. When we got to the part of the work where we wrote a letter to ourselves from our enchantment, and I love that she uses the word enchantment. This is Liz, Liz's, uh, Liz Gilbert's interpretation of Martha Beck's work. Um, she uses enchantment specifically because that feeling of enchantment, she describes as this just buttery, delicious, take your breath away, those moments in life that you look at and go, oh, I, I, I want more of that. Like, I'm just enchanted. Those like two, three, four, five places in your life that you can just go to and go, yeah, it took my breath away. That felt so good. And I was just in the sun and I was just quiet and it just felt enchanting. You write a letter to yourself from your enchantment about things that spark it in you. What like the enchantment tells you, Bonnie, here is what brings more of me around. Here's what makes me show up more. And you write this list as we went through the room and shared some things from our list, 
the things on the enchantment list are incredibly unique because they come from a completely different part of the brain. They are unique like fingerprints, like snowflakes. They are different for everyone. Uh, it's E on the end of her name, Brooks. Yeah, R-A-E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have unique things that bring us joy. We have unique things that put us in states of enchantment. We have unique things that create bliss for us. And most of them don't cost any money. And most of them don't need to involve other people too much. Or if they do, they're in tiny little ways. They don't require grand gestures. They don't require money. They don't require expensive, elaborate productions. They're super simple and they're small and they feel so good at such a visceral level. And what Liz said was our life's work is to do more of the things that put us in states of enchantment. That's it. That, that's all we're here to do. Everything else, bonus points. She basically gave us baseline criteria and everything else is bonus points. And everything that we're all fearing is universal, which means we have something that bonds us because we all have that in common. But the things that enchant us are unique and special and easy and simple. Maybe not easy, simple, simple, simple. Uh, Trina says, Bonnie, still working on the woo. Have you ever read The Life You Were Born to Live by Dan Millman? In fact, I have my copy on this shelf. On that shelf, what shelf is it on? Oh, it may actually be in, in, the, uh, in the dining room, but yes. I have Dan Millman's The Life You Were Born to Live. Uh, it is a great numerology book. Um, most of my understanding of numerology came from my mom's teacher, Lynn Buss. His books are like the granddaddy of numerology books. And so that's how I learned in the 70s um, about all that I know about numerology. And then I got the Dan Millman book probably in 1990, I want to say. May have been a little later, 92-ish. I know I was in undergrad, so it was in my last couple years of college before I moved to LA the first time in 93. And um, I have written all in it, like w everybody I knew and like what sign they were and what their number is like in the margins. And so I know from where I read all the people, like when that came into my life. But yes, um, I, I like it. I like it a lot. I think it is a, an easier to consume uh, book on numerology for people. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's really good. It, it does. It matches up. It's like the only difference is um, Lynn Buss didn't do a lot on angel numbers or double numbers, power numbers, which Dan Millman spends a lot of energy on. And so I still go old school, just all the way down to single digits. But there are other people, more modern approach to it is that if you were a 22 before you became a four, that 22 means something differently than if you were a three and a one and then a four. Um, but uh, I, to me, it's all still just a four. But, um, but you know different strokes, right? It's, it's, it's just a different way of uh, coming, coming to the same uh, basic information and then it just has a slightly different flavor to it. But yes, yes, yes. So what I would recommend, y'all, let's close on this. Let's take this lesson from Martha Beck as given to me through Liz Gilbert and as currently going on in some form or fashion by Amber Ray. And if you just go to Hey Amber Ray, and Ray is R-A-E, uh, on Instagram. She has a, a, her link in bio will let you sign up and you can get the 30 days of prompts coming to you. And she's loving sharing those on Instagram. And Aisha, that's a good point for you. She's doing, um, like there's a hashtag and everybody's sharing pictures of themselves doing the work. So it's like what we do. I go, put your, your self-management for actors work out on the internet and put hashtag SNSA ninjas. Or if you're doing JFDI with Vaughn, put hashtag JFDI with Vaughn. Like I want to celebrate you. I want to yes and you. I want to like amplify the work that you're doing. Um, and it's, it really helps. It really helps with a share strategy. Um, let's end on, if you could do a little journaling where you allow that fearful part of your brain to share with you what it's afraid of, get it out, get it written out, like light a candle, give yourself 20 minutes. You, you won't even take that long, but give yourself 20 minutes where you're just going to let it let, just let it all out and you might start crying you might get into a rage it is all totally legal like let it just let it flow like what am i afraid of what am i afraid of and and if you can do it from what does fear want to tell me that's even more powerful because it allows the voice to be you girl are in trouble it's like um the movie ghost 
you know, like Molly, you in danger, girl. Like that, that's like that moment where there's the fear is trying to tell you, you are in trouble. You are in danger. You don't realize how scary this is. And, and of course you, you do realize that, but you need to let fear have its say. Because what we feel a lot of stress about is trying to keep that voice quiet. And if we would just let it say everything that it needs to say, it's kind of like letting a two-year-old have a tantrum. And they're called the terrible twos for a reason. Let that bitch cry it out. Let that tantrum happen. Let it beat on pillows and scream and cry and just projectile tears and all the screeching and all the things that make childless by choice people like me so glad for that choice all that rage all that sound all that energy let it out because then when it's done you're able to go you okay and then fear goes yeah i got that out then spend a little time with your enchantment really think of a time that you felt enchanted that you felt this takes my breath away. This is so beautiful. This is so enough. It's so simple and so basic and it feels so good. And then right from a place of these are things that let enchantment feel safe to show up. And it's simple things like an animal, like a meadow, like holding hands with someone, like laughter, like just connection. It's really simple, easy things. Write all that down and see if then you can journal about how that felt to let both of those conversations happen. There's a lot more to that work. Let's start with that. And then we have another call in 10 days and we can continue to have some conversation about where we need to go from there because there's a lot going on right now. Hug yourself one more time. Hug yourself, hug yourself, hug yourself, hug yourself. Give yourself love. You showed up, you showed up, you stayed, you did the work. I'm so proud of you. I love y'all so much. This is not small shit that's going on in the world. So please don't become your own bully. Treat yourself really well. Treat yourself really well, whatever that means, whatever that needs to look like. I love y'all so much. I will see you in the dojo. Take care. Bye y'all.